What's up guys, it's Bauman from Empire Barbell and today we're gonna talk about external rotation, specifically as it applies to having a balanced structure that's going to be efficient and injury proof. That's what we want. So with all movements, we have our main movers and then we have the antagonists. When you bench press, your pectorals, your delts, your triceps are all contracting to move the weight. The muscles of your upper back and your biceps are antagonists. They're there to provide this counter tension. They provide stability by working against the actual movement. And what we find is that the stronger antagonists are, the more capacity you have to exert force. The more stable you are, the more efficient you're going to be in whatever movement it is you're trying to do. So this occurs with just about everything. So when we're talking about grip strength, the muscles that cause your hand to close are the main movers, but they are limited by how strong your extensors are. So if you have weak extensors, then you're gonna find that your capacity to have a strong grip is actually limited. This is true in a lot of a lot of the different movements that we engage in. So with rotator cuff specifically, it's a buzzword when it comes to shoulder health because people frequently get rotator cuff injuries if they're reckless or if they engage in bad habits over a long period of time. It's very common with something like bench pressing. Now the rotator cuff we wish to strengthen because we want to avoid those injuries but there's also a case to be made for it increasing performance. By getting the muscles that increase stability strong, that is going to increase your ability to then put out force from the main movers because the whole system is just working more efficiently, less strength is being wasted through these little inefficiencies. So I'm gonna cite an article that Paula Quinn wrote, Charles Paula Quinn wrote about 20 years ago. Uh, you can find it on t Nation. But basically he was talking about structural stability and being well-rounded and efficient. And he was talking specifically about the rotator cuff. Now we're gonna dig into this because this is a clear example of, we need more study, we need more data. I don't want you to look at this data set as the end all be all, but it does provide a little bit of conceptual insight in how these things work. So basically what Paula Quinn did was he came up with a table. It was using a 14 inch close grip bench press as a gold standard movement and then ranking as a percentage of that movement, all of these other exercises on what he thought they should be to represent kind of the optimal, like most well-rounded lifter. So if we were looking at a bench press as 100%, a close grip bench press is 100%, he found what percentage these other movements from like an incline press to a curl to an external rotation, what percentage of that movement they should be for optimal performance. Obviously these are not fixed numbers. There's gonna be a ton of variability within this study, but just bear with me. He worked off an assumption that 10, about 10% 10 of your close grip bench press max should be what you would use in a one-arm dumbbell external rotation for about eight reps. That was the standard that he had set. So he had worked, in one case study, he worked with a hockey player who had a 280 pound close grip bench press. He could only execute three reps with an eight pound dumbbell in a one-arm external rotation and Obviously that showed a huge imbalance. That, that showed that was an injury waiting to happen. It wasn't just a point of inefficiency. That is an injury waiting to happen, especially in a violent sport like hockey. So what Poliquin did was he had him stop bench pressing and he had him work his external rotation until he could do 35 pounds for eight reps. What he found is when he tested his close grip again, he had a 330 pound close grip bench press. He then had him go through a bench press specialization program and had him go into hockey camp with a 380 pound close grip bench press. So his assessment was that by fixing this very obvious weakness, he was able to dramatically increase performance. Now that's not groundbreaking, but it does give special insight on the likelihood that you have a big weakness that needs to be fixed. It's not just that we need our shoulders healthy for the sake of longevity, which we do, it's that we need performance to be increased, we need efficiency to be increased, and nobody works their external rotators the way they need to. Now, the way rotation works, every time we throw, we're going through internal rotation. There's a lot of activities we have done through our life that involve internal rotation. There's virtually nothing we do that loads external rotation, this opposite side of the coin. So lately, in the last 15, 20 years, things like base pulls and band pull aparts have become kind of a staple when it comes to warming up your upper body for, let's say, a heavy bench press routine. So with so with something like a bandage face pull, we are pulling towards our forehead and we're engaging in external rotation as we're swiveling our upper arm. This is where the external rotation takes place. And as we get through 15 or 20 reps, it might not even take that long, we start to notice we get a little bit of fire going deep in the shoulder. And then we feel really good to kick off our benching because now our shoulders feel great. They're lubricated, there's a lot of blood, they're ready to go. 
Now that's a great warm up movement and with enough intensity and volume, it might even be an okay developer. But if we're actually talking about strengthening a weak muscle, we need to get a little more aggressive and that's where weights come in. So to do a single arm external rotation, all you need is a dumbbell and a bench. So part of the recipe for developing strength is stability. And this is kind of a hard movement to do with any amount of stability. So what we do is we prop one leg up on a bench, we dig our elbow right into our knee. Now that is our point of stability so that we can work. We can externally rotate with our elbow fixed in space. And that's gonna allow us to apply more force, to be a lot more stable. And just as we apply this principle to all of our other compound movements, that's gonna result in better, more substantial strength gains. So you're gonna start with the elbow on the knee, the dumbbell right above the elbow. You're gonna keep your eyes fixated on the dumbbell the whole time. You are going to very slowly let the dumbbell move down as you keep your elbow in the same spot. And then you're going to bring it back up. You don't wanna over extend at the top. You don't wanna lose tension and you wanna make sure you keep nice, even tension. Really emphasize on keeping your shoulder joint stable the entire time. And from the opposite side. So this actually does work as a warm up. You can do this and actually go kind of heavy before you bench press. But as a movement, as a standalone strength exercise, it's very effective at stimulating the muscles of the external rotators to grow and to strengthen. That's gonna make your shoulder more stable and it is going to increase performance. There isn't a single one of you that couldn't benefit from having your rotator cuff stronger and increasing your ability to handle that external rotation under a load. That's going to round out your shoulders. It's going to help move you away from movement dysfunction and it's gonna set you up to move big weights once you're under a heavy loaded barbell. And then of course, as I always say, it doesn't matter what you do if you're not around long enough to get strong in the first place. So this is going to help with longevity so you can actually accrue enough training years without falling apart where you might be in danger of doing something impressive one day. So this is a great staple. I would do these a couple times a week. I would work in the eight to 12 range, keep a tempo, move slow, resist the urge to make really big aggressive jumps. Okay, you wanna demonstrate control because if you do have a weak rotator cuff, that means if you load it up prematurely, you are going to predispose yourself to a terrorist strain, you wanna avoid that. Give yourself time to run up, give yourself enough time to acclimate and adapt to the movement. And that's going to leave you with a thicker, stronger, more well-rounded shoulder joint. And that's what we want. So thanks for watching guys. If you have any questions, leave it in the comments. Until next time, this is Bromley from Empire Barbell. I'll see you.